my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be doing a catacorn. If you guys don't know what a catacorn is, it's basically a cat with a unicorn horn. It's really simple, it's super cute, and I'm going to be doing that today. I also want to let you guys know that tomorrow we're going to have a video as well. It's going to be the first in a three-part series of making a very large piece, and I'm really excited, so make sure to keep an eye out for that as well. Anyways, let's get started. Okay guys, so we're going to work on the sewing first, so I'm going to show you the pattern and all the fabric pieces that we need to make our catacorn. So this pattern is basically the same pattern for my Arctic Fox that I made a few videos ago. The only reason it's slightly different is because I didn't save the pattern and I had to redraw it out. So of course you have the main body piece right here where the legs come apart so you can do the inside parts of the legs and then you'll need the tail and the belly piece. The tail is a little bit wider than what I did for the Arctic Fox, mainly because I want it to be nice and fluffy, because the type of cat that I want to do is going to be a Persian cat. So for the fabric pieces, you're going to need a left and a right body piece, two pieces for the tail, they're basically the same, so I'm not gonna label them left or right, your belly piece, and then the inside parts of all of the legs. So we're going to start on the sewing for the tail first, and basically you're going to take the two pieces and you're going to sandwich them together with the fur on the inside, and then you're going to go all the way around. I'm going to stop sewing a little bit prematurely, that way I have a little bit more wiggle room for when I have to flip this right side out. It just makes it a lot easier because the base of the tail is so thin. So after you get the sewing, you're going to flip it right side out, stuff it, and then continue sewing the rest of it closed. Next, I'm going to take our body pieces and I'm going to lay out the inside parts of the legs on the legs of the body piece. I'm only going to be sewing down the front of the legs. I'm going to leave the back of the legs open because we're going to add some paw pads to this later and it just makes it a lot easier to flip right side out and mess with all of that. After you have the sewing for the front of the legs done on all of the legs, you're now going to connect the belly piece to the body. So you're going to take the belly piece and you're going to sew it to one side of the body and then the other side of the body. And that's going to be all of the sewing for now. Of course there's going to be more later, but we need to make our clay pieces. So the first bit of clay that we are going to work on is going to be all four of the paw pads for our catacorn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll out even amounts of clay for each base of the foot. And then I'm going to squish it down and make a nice flat base to work on. So I have all of these little balls rolled out and measured so they're nice and even, and I'm going to start placing them on the clay. So I'm going to start with the main paw pad, and then we're going to move on to the toe pads. Now with doing the toe pads, I recommend making the inner toes slightly larger than the outer toes. It just makes the foot position better. If you have the outer toes kind of the same, it kind of makes it look a little webbed or something. It just makes the foot look too wide. So you're going to push your balls into place on the clay surface and then you're going to kind of mess around with the shape of them and then use your tools to kind of blend them into the base of the clay. Now normally when I'm doing paw pads I like adding a bit of texture and stuff to them but I have other plans for these that are a little bit different. I haven't tried this before so what we're going to do is we're going to bake them first and then I'm going to show you the next step. So I'm going to put these in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about probably 30 minutes, just to be safe. So basically what I'm doing is I want to make the paw pads nice and glittery. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply a thin layer of resin on top of the clay, just kind of painting it on, making sure to get into all of the cracks, and then I'm gonna take some glitter and I'm going to be pushing my paw pad into the pile of glitter, and then just making sure everything is completely covered in glitter. After I get all of the paw pads finished, I'm going to set these aside to dry. Resin takes usually about a day to dry, so you'll have to check back in on them the next day. So these are basically done for now until we need to add them to the body. So we are going to now work on the clay face for our catacorn. So for our clay face, I'm going to make a nice thick layer of clay to work with. So I'm going to take my glass container and completely cover the bottom of it, which is technically the top since I've got it flipped upside down and I don't really use the top. So the top is the bottom and the bottom is the top. Now remember, we are making a Persian, so I don't need to make a large snout or anything. It's going to be really petite and squished in. So what I'm doing to shape the face, since it is going to be so flat, is I'm just going to kind of mark out where I want the eyes to go, and then I'm going to add a little bit of clay where I want the snout to go. 
Now to finish the snout and also the mouth, I'm going to take two larger clay balls and I'm going to push them together onto the face. These are going to be basically the left and right cheek. So I'm going to take those balls and I'm going to press them into the clay and then start blending them into the rest of the face. While doing this, I still want to make sure that my snout is kind of sticking out, but just barely. I'm probably not going to have it lift up more than about an inch. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of clay and make the bottom lip. I'm going to just push that into place and blend it in as well. Next, we're going to move on to making the eyes. So I want my eyes to be quite large, so I'm going to use some pretty large balls of clay, making sure to roll them out nice and evenly, and then I'm going to push them into the face where I want the eyes to go. I'm going to kind of round them off a little bit, and then I'm going to add some strips of clay around them to make the eyelids. Now while I'm adding the strips of clay for the eyelids, I am going to be adding some strips of clay going down the sides of the snout to create kind of a wrinkly effect. At this point, it kind of looks a bit more like a pug or a very like wrinkly faced dog, but after we add the fur to it and everything, it's going to look so much more cat-like. Trust me, I know it looks like a pug, but it's going to change. Now I'm going to start on the nose. Now if I wanted to, I could just use the amount of clay that's already there, but I want to make the nose stick out just slightly and make it a little bit larger. So I'm going to add a little bit more clay to the end of this and start blending it together. Once I like the shape of it, I'm going to use my tools to mark where the nostrils are going to go and then to shape the rest of the nose. Now the last bit of detail we need to do is we need to add a horn to the face of our catacorn. Now this horn, I'm probably going to try and do a video more on doing this because this horn is actually made of resin and then I did the same thing that I did with the paw pads and I glittered it. So all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to push it into the clay face and then pop it out. Usually you can run resin through the oven with clay, but just because it's covered in glitter, I'm not sure how the glitter is going to react, if it's going to melt or something. So I'm just going to pop it into the clay, pull it out, leave that mark, and then we're going to glue it into place after the face has been done baking. So now I'm just going to put the catacorn's face in the oven for about probably 30 to 40 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. Okay, it's the next day and all of our clay pieces are ready to put together. So our paw pads have finished curing, all the glitter is nice and hard and in place on them, and then our face is done baking as well and I've got the horn glued into place. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start on adding the paw pads to the feet. So I'm going to use a combination of E6000 glue and a little bit of hot glue. The hot glue is just to hold things into place while the E6000 dries. So I'm just going to glue the fabric around the base of the paw pad and then we're going to let this dry. So I'm going to do this to all four feet, let it dry, and then we can sew up the back of the leg and then stuff them. Once all of the legs are finished, I'm going to move on to attaching the tail to the back end of our catacorn. So all I'm going to do is sew it in between the two layers of the fabric for the body. After that's done, we're going to move on to attaching the head to the body. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing that we did with the paw pads and just do it around the base of the head. So I'm just going to take my hot glue gun, glue it into place, and then I'm going to go over that with some E6000. I'm going to let all of this dry and then once it's done drying, I'm going to stuff the rest of the body and close up the back of the catacorn. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the details of the face. So the first thing I'm going to do is work on a pair of ears for our catacorn. So I'm going to take some felt and some fur fabric that matches the fur for the body and I'm going to cut out some little triangles. I'm then going to take the felt and the fur and we're going to sew them together, leaving the bottom of the ear open so we can flip it out and then we're going to glue them into place on the forehead of the catacorn. After those are in place, we can now start furring the face. So the larger parts of the face, I'm just going to cut little pieces of fabric to fit those places, and then once we get closer to like the wrinkles and everything, I'm going to start taking little chunks of fur off of my fur fabric, and I'm going to glue it onto the face individually. So I'm just taking little tufts of fur, and then pushing it into some glue that I've laid down, and letting that dry. This part is a little bit time consuming and kind of messy sometimes because you do have to push your tools into the glue, so take your time with it. Now normally when I fur my face, I like to get everything completely covered in fur, let it dry, and then use a little bit of my paint to add some detail to it. 
Now this time around, because we have all these wrinkles, I want to show those off, and the best way to do it is to add the shadowing before we fur the more forward part of the face. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a portion of the face, I'm going to use a little bit of acrylic paint, maybe grays or whatnot, I'm going to go over that portion of the face and comb it into the fur, let that dry, and then we can add more fur to the face, let that dry, add more coloring to it, and just keep going until we have everything completely furred and colored. So again, we're going to be painting portions of the face, letting that dry, furring more of the face, letting that dry, and then going over that again with some more paint colors. I'm going to use a toothbrush for this because I found out that the fine bristles actually work really well in combing the paint into the fur without getting it clumpy. So basically you just kind of keep combing it and separating all the individual furs. It takes the paint on, but it doesn't clump the fur together. It just distributes the paint nice and evenly. Once we have all the fur finished, we can move on to doing the nose and the eyes. So what I did first with the eyes was I primered them with a nice layer of white to get rid of all the different colors that kind of got onto the eyes while we were painting the fur. For the nose, all I'm going to be doing is painting it a nice gray and then adding a little bit of shadowing and stuff here and there. So that part's really simple, we're going to focus mostly on the eyes now. Once I had it nice and primered and that dried, we're going to start adding some colors to this. Now I decided that I wanted my eyes to stand out a little bit and kind of look a little bit galaxy-like, so I'm going to be using purples and blues. All I'm going to be doing is I'm going to paint some of the blue and then the purple on and I'm going to blend it together so it kind of looks like it fades from blue to purple. I'm going to go over the whole eye. You don't need to do this, but I wasn't quite sure where I was going to put the pupil, so I'm just going to cover the whole eye in the colors that I want for it, and then after that's dried we can paint on the black pupil. And then the last little detail you'll need to do is add some highlights to it, so just a little bit of white paint to make it look like they shine. After all of my paint has dried, I'm going to go over the nose and the eyes with some resin so they're nice and protected. The fur should be fine, you don't have to worry about the fur chipping or anything like that, so you just need to resin the eyes and the nose to help protect the paint and to give it kind of a glossy effect. This will all have to dry overnight and then your piece should be done in the morning, everything should be all nice and set. Okay guys, and that's how I did a catacorn. I had so much fun with him. I'm going to have him along with a bunch of other creatures in my Etsy shop. So make sure to check the links down below for that if you want to buy anything. Also remember tomorrow we're going to have a video as well, so make sure to keep an eye out for that. Anyways guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, leave me a like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!